In the previous lesson, we learned about the new HTML5 canvas tag, which as you'll recall, allows you to use JavaScript to draw shapes uh, and text inside of the canvas to create bitmap images on the web page. And in this lesson, we're gonna look at a similar technology that's been included in HTML5, namely Scalable Vector Graphics, or SVG. Uh, SVG has actually been a web standard for many years, and Internet Explorer has supported this file format for a long time. Furthermore, you can export SVG drawings directly from Adobe Illustrator, which is a popular tool with graphic designers. Then you can import the SVG drawing into your web page just like you would any other image file. Uh, in fact, you're going to see us use the IMG tag, uh, HTML tag, to do this very thing a little bit later in this video. So then, why in the world would you use the FVG file format and not export the file from Adobe Illustrator using something popular like a GIF or JPEG or PNG. So what we need to do is spend a little bit of time talking about the difference between scalable vectors and raster or rather bitmapped images like GIF, JPEG, and PNG files. And this is going to be a super short answer to a big topic. In a nutshell, a raster or bitmapped image is comprised of a series of dots. Each dot or bit is mapped to a color, okay? And uh, so you can make all the dots look bigger so you can zoom in, but when you do that, things start to look pixelated. By contrast, a vector image is just a description of basic shapes, lines, arcs, text, colors, gradients, and so on. So to scale the image, you merely need to scale the viewable area, kind of like stretching a balloon with printing on it. So as you make the entire area, uh, the, the view box, larger, uh, it scales and the image retains its sharpness and its smoothness, and you can't see the individual dots because there are none, per se. Uh, at any rate, uh, SVG images are resolution and device independent, so they can scale up or down to fit proportionally into any size display. And since they don't have to represent each individual pixel, just a description of the shapes, uh, they can be smaller than bitmap files in some cases, and you can even modify their appearance using cascading style sheets. So that's really cool, and the coolest thing in my opinion is that you can use JavaScript to react to user input. Uh, say, for example, one of the shapes or lines or the text uh, in your SVG file, you want to make it clickable, or you want to make it so when the user hovers over it, something happens. Uh, you can react to user input and modify the attributes of various shapes, text, and so on. And at the end of this lesson, I'm going to show you a popular game that was written in very few lines of code using SVG and JavaScript. Okay, so how does SVG compare to the canvas? Well, currently, the biggest difference is that SVG is declarative. In other words, it looks more like HTML than JavaScript. So, unlike the canvas, you don't have to know JavaScript in order to create basic shapes and, and diagrams uh, in your SVG document. Also, like I just said a moment ago, SVG can respond to user events. So uh, using JavaScript, you can respond to, for example, a click event on one of the shapes. Uh, and there are third-party JavaScript libraries that add this functionality to the canvas, uh, but it's just not baked into the canvas the same way that it's baked into SVG. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of examples here that I prepared. And I just want to go through these really quickly and just kind of show you the thought process that I went through as I was first getting acclimated to what exactly is SVG. I started in Adobe Illustrator and uh, I took a screenshot of what I created in Adobe Illustrator. Again, very simple. Here we have a rectangle that has a fill and a... Um, stroke applied, a red stroke applied to uh, to create a border around it. Same thing is true with this this circle shape. Again, it has a fill and a stroke around it. Created some text and I created a line. And then what I did in Illustrator was simply save as and I chose SVG as the save as format. It brought up a dialogue. I made some selections about how I wanted it to actually output the SVG 
very simple, very straightforward. Uh, and what it created for me was this SVG document. So you can see as I brought it into my Windows 7 machine and I'm looking at it here, it renders it as a document that Internet Explorer knows how to open. So if you just double click this, you can see the output of the SVG uh, image. And it looks almost identical to what I created in Adobe Illustrator. All right, which uh, is kind of, I don't know, fascinating to me. There's no loss in quality or anything. Uh, and then I started uh, experimenting. How can I actually open up this test.svg document into my HTML5 web page and use it as a smaller part of a larger web page. And there's a couple of different ways to go about this. The easiest way is simply to reference it inside of uh, the web page using an image, setting the source equal to the test.svg file. And when I do that, let's open it up in Internet Explorer, you can see it looks just like it did previously so we can use it just like any other image that we have in our uh, in our HTML5 or CSS uh, work that we're doing awesome the other way that I can uh, work with this SVG document and when I open this up in notepad you can see it looks a lot like uh, HTML with opening and closing uh, angle brackets. Here's a closing tag and an opening tag. Here we have attributes set equal to properties. And that's because this is a XML file format. Uh, and XML and HTML come from the same um, style or the same root parent of, of how to create declarative markup like like we see here. And so we could take some time and format this a little bit nicer, but you can see here's the definition for the rectangle. You have the X and Y position, the fill color, the stroke color, the width of the stroke, uh, and then also a width and height for that rectangle as well. Same thing with the circle. We have a fill and a stroke color and a stroke width. And then we have the center X and the center Y and then a radius of 56. So that draws uh, our, our orange uh, circle on the page. Here's text. We have a fill color, a uh, font family of Arial and a font size. And then in between the opening and closing text tag, we have just the text that we want to render. And I can modify that on the fly using JavaScript or jQuery or what have you. And that becomes part of the image then. And then finally the line uh, where we have just the beginning point and the end point for the line in terms of uh, X and Y coordinates. All right. So that's the simple uh, breakdown of the SVG. And so I merely just copied all of this and then pasted it into a um, uh, HTML document called copy paste svg.html and you can see I, I deleted some stuff out uh, and I could even delete more stuff where there's this like XML namespace and, and all of this could actually be removed and it would still work just fine and so this is the second whoops yes that's the second way that you can add SVG to your uh, to your HTML5 pages. All right, so that's really neat. Uh, the last thing that I want to demonstrate is how to write JavaScript that can interact with the SVG. Uh, and for this example, you can see I kind of, I'm going to click allow blocked content here because we have some JavaScript that we're running locally. Uh, and unfortunately, just the way that these lessons match up, I'm not talking about JavaScript in this series. You'll have to look at the uh, Channel 9 JavaScript fundamentals series that I created, but uh, to learn more, I use the basic template of the rectangle and the circle and the text. And basically, every time you click on any one of these items, it moves over 50 pixels. All right, pretty stupid and pretty silly. However, you can see that it not only reacts to my click, but then also I'm able to set attributes for all these individual elements uh, using JavaScript. So we right click and we take a look at this in Notepad. Um, you can see that here is my SVG with a rectangle, a circle, and some text. And I've just added an on click attribute. So whenever the user clicks it, I'm going to call a JavaScript function. 
and that JavaScript function is declared here. Now I don't go in and I'm not going to explain much about what this does. However, we're simply getting a reference to any the given shape that was clicked on, and then we start retrieving its x of the xy value just to determine where its position is, and then we add 100 to it and then set the x position in the case of a circle or for all the other shapes. Uh, we set it back to the new value and that's how we get it to move over. Again, if you don't understand this, that's fine. I completely understand. Watch the JavaScript series after you're finished with this series. Uh, so that is pretty much it in a nutshell. Now obviously there's a lot more that we could do here. Transformations of any of the given uh, objects that we've created to skew or rotate them or to apply uh, different um, uh, um, colors or patterns, gradients uh, to the uh, to the given shapes so over time. We can create animations. We can style using CSS. Uh, all the uh, those sorts of things you may want to investigate further. And to that end, what I found that was the most helpful was the small book by O'Reilly. Uh, and I don't know the author. I've never. Uh, I just bought this ebook online through their website and uh, it does a particularly nice job of explaining uh, how to work with the coordinate system inside of SVG and through that I was able to run through and uh, get a nice example uh, working and and I certainly have a lot more to learn in this regard but it is a uh, it's a very interesting read very well done let me show you what I promised early in this uh, in this video and that is a game that was created using SVG and JavaScript and so uh, you can take a look at this SVG Tetris and I'm not very good at this I tried it a little bit earlier today oh, man however you are able to play Tetris with it and look here's the scalability look I can make it very small and it still retains its shape or I can make it much larger as well uh, and then the other neat thing to look at is in how few lines of code that it actually took to create this and so here is all the code um, I don't know maybe 200 lines uh, most of it is JavaScript a few uh, declarations of uh, the SVG itself down here and that's about it so uh, certainly uh, something to aspire to long term if you want to learn how to uh, uh, to take advantage of this and I expect to see SVG take on an increasingly important role in web development because it does so many things well and it has some tool support from tools that graphic designers already use okay so that's it for SVG high level overview of what it can do and how it can be utilized within your HTML5 web pages. Thank you.